I thought about repeating some slides in order to show afterwards uh, a last presentation and to talk more about this region that it's so important, the operculum, mesiotemporal, subinsular for insular tumors and to see how you can see it through the transuvian approach, through the pterinal approach. But uh, so I, I might repeat some slides, but I think this anatomy is so important. Let me come here. So since I already showed some slides, I might skip some until we reach to the last dissection. But this is an important one. You have corona radiata, and then you have the superior longitudinal fascicle. Remember that the, uh, the arcuate fascicle is the inner aspect of the superior longitudinal fascicle, which has an horizontal portion, a, verti a vertical portion, and then the arcuate is deep in within all this. And then we have here the uh, uh, insular surface, the claustrum together with the extreme uh, capsule, the putamen, and IFOF and the uncinate fascicle together at the same layer as the external capsule. Uh, if we cut the superior longitudinal fasco, we see the tapetum fibers here. This is all sagittal stratum. We talked about this. Very thick, a lot of fibers here. We're going to review this. And this is the, the, the tapetum. You see the tapetum here. And here you see the, uh, the tapetum fibers arising here. And we can see better here. Right, and since we didn't talk very much about the third ventricle, let's let's get back to this to this area here, and uh, you see the thalamus here. This is what is inside the wall of the third ventricle. You have, of course, the crura, the body of the fornix, the column of the fornix going to the mammillary body, mammillothalamic tract or Victor Z, we'll come to the anterior tubercular, nucle anterior thalamic nuclei that will go through the cingulum parahypocampal with the papi circuit, okay? So this is the anterior commissure, and this is the chia, this is the lamina terminalis, okay? Now, this is already dissect within, inside the, 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 the floor, the, the, the wall of the third ventricle. You have, you, you have here the thalamus, and you can see here the subthalamic nuclei, okay? And this is already the, the, the interpeduncular nucleus. And this slide, I want to show this, this thing that was mentioned here is the stria medullaris. And you have in between the stria medullaris, the telacoroidea, the superior telacoroidea, would be attached here to the underneath the fornix. And the inferior telacoroidea would be attached to the lamina, to the uh, to the uh, thalamic uh, stria here in both sides. And you have this big space here in between. This big space is continuous with the pineal cistern. And this is the velum interposton space, cistern space we talked about, that it's the most medial aspect of the transverse fissure of the brain. It goes from the pineal region until the foramen Monroe here. And inside here, you have uh, the internal cerebral veins. So you would have the thalamic, the, 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 the thalamic stride vein here, and then it would come to, 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 through the foramen of Monroe, and here it would be continuous with the internal cerebral vein. And you also have within this space the posterior, posterior medial uh, uh, choroidal arteries. So this is the velum interposition system area that we talked about. Here, here you have the, anterior com the posterior commissure. Posterior commissure is the superior limit of the opening of the aqueduct. And then you have a prominence in each side of, uh, of the brain, in each thalamus, which is the abenula. And from one abenula to, to our side, to the other abenula, we have the commissure of the abenula. So we have the pineal gland that it's already outside the third ventricle, and the pineal gland is attached to the brain with two arms. The inferior arm is holding the posterior commissure, and the superior arm is holding the uh, abenular commissure. So that's how the pineal cistern is attached. The pineal gland is attached to the brain. And in between, in between this, both of these arms, you have the pineal recess of the third ventricle. The idea was to come back and show this velum interpositum area that we talked about. 
So let's come back to our operculum. Here we did cut the superior longitudinal fascicle. We see in the ventral striatum, the external capsule, same layer as the IFOF and same layer as the, 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 the uncinate fascicle. If we remove this, we can see the putamen with the corticostriatal fibers coming here. This, all these fibers are, again, the sagittal stratum. If we remove the putamen, we're seeing the internal capsule. We're seeing the globus pallidus. IFOF, you see that the IFOF here and the uncinate fascicle is anterior to the IFOF. Here you can see better. We already went through the slides. So this is a region I want to re-emphasize. I'm so, uh, going to show a new uh, dissection through another perspective of it. This is the so-called ventral striatum area or the anterior commissure area. You remember that you have as a posterior, you have the globus pallidus. The most anterior part of the globus pallidus, which is the anterior pallidal area, and you have the anterior commissure that's going to be running in the channel, we're going to be seeing here. As the floor of this, we have the anterior, um, anterior perforate substance, the ventral striatum of the accumbens medially, and the anterior limb of the capsule as the roof of all this region. This is also the uh, IFOF and the uncinate that are, are anterior to the so-called ventral striatum. Here you have the, the, the minor nucleus, you have the accumbens, you have the ventral extension of the amygdala that we're going to be seeing. The amygdala, you, can, you know that it's right here. This is the ventricular cavity. The amygdala would be here, and the hippocampus head would be posteriorly. Okay, so we have these vessels, these tiny vessels, which are the lenticular striate arteries. They come into the brain through the anterior perforate substance, and they go exactly within, inside this region of the ventral striatum. And at this point, you can see the anterior commissure here. And you see that these arteries, they go mainly anterior to the anterior commissure. But some small branches can go underneath the anterior commissure towards the globus pallidus. We're talking about the ventral striatum area. Again, ventral striatum area. And if we remove the IFOF and the, the, the uncinate fascicle, again, you see the anterior commissure going with this fibrous posteriorly, the amygdala with the ansa peduncularis, the optic tract. And this region here is still the uh, anterior perforate substance. Of course, this is the accumbens, the channel of graciolet. If we remove this, we can see that the uh, the amygdala, just anteriorly to the, to the hippocampus head, is continuous with the globus pallidus. The uh, optic uh, radiation arising from the region of the lateral geniculate body, medial geniculate body at the top of lateral mesencephalic sulcus. This is the pulvinar, posterior part of the thalamus. And you have this optic uh, radiation fibers arising. This is the Meyer loop. And this go posterior, you see that it's all these this fibers here, they cover the inferior horn, they will cover the atrium here posteriorly, and they are also the lateral wall of these uh, cavities. Now, this slide I hadn't uh, shown yet, it, it, it shows the roof of the, uh, of the inferior horn, and of course you're seeing here the amygdala. And what is the posterior extension, the amygdala? Does anybody remember the name? Posterior extension, the amygdala, that goes to the bed nucleus of the? Estria. Estria terminalis. So you see how beautiful this is, the stria terminalis. This is the amygdala. And this is the roof. What is this gray matter within the roof? Yes, what is it? This is the tail of the caudate. You see the tail of the caudate that we talked about yesterday at the roof of the inferior horn, and it's going to end in the amygdala. This is still the amygdala. To see this, uh, to have this image, of course I did have to remove the hippocampus because the hippocampus is in the floor of the inferior horn. We see in the roof, okay? Lateral body, posterior uh, perforate substance, optic tract. Anterior perf uh, posterior perforate substance, because everything that is posterior to the optic tracts is posterior uh, perforate substance. Mammillary bodies, this is pituitary stalk. Tubercinarium is in this area here. 
This again, I already told very much about is the fusiform is the uh, is the uh, is the floor. Fusiform is the floor of the inferior horn and of the atrium, as I told you very very many times. So if we remove all this and we go again, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, if we start removing step by step from the base, we see that inside the fusiform gyrus, going along inside the fusiform gyrus, we have another bundle here of fibers. What, can anybody guess what tract is this that runs inside the fusiform gyrus? Neurologists say to us classically that this uh, bundle of fibers is involved in facial recognition. Yeah, somebody said, what is that? Inferior longitudinal fascicle. So you see the inferior longitudinal fascicle. Inferior longitudinal fascicle runs deep inside the fusiform gyrus. We already saw this beautiful slide here, the, the amygdala ansa peduncularis, okay? Ansa peduncularis has three components, amygdala fugal components, okay, which are the going to the septal region, amygdala septal, amygdala hypothalamic, and amygdala thalamic. Anterior commissure, posterior to it. We already went through this. I just want to remember before showing the last dissection. You have the accumbens, the caudate, the putamen. And this beautiful slide that showed the anterior commissure, uh, the, the fornix comes and like a fork, it opens with an anterior component going to the septal region and a posterior component going towards the mammillary body. This is the anterior commissure. You, know, you have these small branches of the anterior commissure that put together as both olfactory tubercles, namely the, uh, the olfactory system. Again, you see these very small branches. We already had shown this. Uh, we talked about the temporal stem. Not going to repeat this. This peduncular part. So this is just to emphasize that uh, the subiculum is underneath the pulvinar, okay? And this is a natural, a natural space. So if you get to the ventricle and you open the choroid fissure, you get in the ambient cistern, and this is all natural spaces. Now, all this anterior part of the amygdala, particularly, and the amygdala, when it goes superior to the head of hippocampus, is incorporated in the basal forebrain. You see there's a small recess here anterior to the head of hippocampus in between the head of hippocampus and the amygdala. And for you to understand about the very, unfortunately, very frequent insular tumors, uh, they occupy all the subinsular region. That's why they are called insular tumors. And it's interesting that they usually, as far as they are still not high grade, they respect the putamen. They push the putamen. And we can show this histologically in these tumors. And this uh, Yasagi also was the one that pointed this. And uh, once in, in, in the subinsular area, they go through the temporal stem, they can reach the temporal lobe through the, through the roof of the temporal lobe. And this slide is to show, again, this area, because I, as I said, pathology, we have to learn anatomy through pathology. You see, you have an insular tumor here through the temporal stem, it did reach the temporal lobe, and then through the temporal stem, it came it came to the to the to the uh, ventus triatum area. This area is in between the anterior perforate substance and the anterior commissure. You see the anterior commissure here displaced posteriorly. Remember that the anterior commissure, as I showed, is the posterior aspect of the ventus triatum area, together with the with the with the gang with the with the globus pallidus. So this is the posterior aspect of it. What is this here? This flow void. This is the ICA, A1 and M1, 
okay? So I, I did put the slide because there's some volume in here that you have tumor in between. What is just behind the bifurcation of the carotid? I insisted with this. What's the wall that is behind the A1 and M1? What is right behind here? Is the anterior perforate substance. The anterior perforate substance is the anterior wall of the ventus striatum. The anterior commissure is the posterior wall. So you see that the tumor from the brain stem, it is continuous along the ventus striatum. And along the ventus striatum, where does it reach? It reaches this area here. This area is the septal region. Septal. So this is a big corridor. You know, the tumor just go, you know, and you see it even goes to the other side. So, of course, when it gets here, you cannot remove it. So, you see, if you understand, if you know anatomy, you know exactly what pathways this tumor is following here, and you can understand exactly its, uh, its anatomy. Okay, now let's see the dissection through a pterional perspective, okay? So... What it would say is this area here? The anterior seven point, okay? You have a very small pars triangularis, very retracted, pars orbitalis. We are seeing from the back, this is not exactly facing laterally, so it's a little bit different, but this is typically pars orbitalis, and this is a beautiful U. So this is the pars opercularis. This is the precentral sulcus. And you see the inferior frontal sulcus meeting here, the precentral sulcus. Subcentral gyrus getting in there, you know, invaginated, because the central sulcus reaches here. So it means that the subcentral gyrus is inside the operculum there. So this is precentral gyrus, this is postcentral gyrus, this is central sulcus, and this is supramarginal gyrus going around the a uh, 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 posterior ascending part of the fissure. We're going to recognize all this now in the brains when we go to the lab. Superior temporal gyrus. Okay, so here we did selectively remove the pars triangularis. And you see that we are exposing only the anterior, most anterior short gyrus of the insula. We left the pars orbitalis because the pars orbitalis doesn't cover the insula, so it's not part of the operculum. Remember that operculum means curtain of the insula, okay? Now we did remove the rest of the operculum. What gyrus is this here? You always look to the Heschel gyrus. You see that the Heschel gyrus, this is all superior, this is all superior temporal gyrus, all superior temporal gyrus. Hessel gyrus is in the superior surface of the superior temporal gyrus inside the fissure. So it's a transverse gyrus, it's our biggest transverse gyrus, transverse gyrus of Hessel. And it goes behind the insula. And you here, you are less than one centimeter from the atrium. Less than one centimeter from the atrium. Important relationships, okay? So, and you, in, 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 and you have here, you know, uh, the supramarginal that would be continuous with the superior temporal. You have the apex, the area of the apex with the short insula. You have a double apex here. And you have a long gyro of the insula that is not related with the apex that has been shown here. Okay, if we remove now, this is the frontal parietal operculum that was removed here. Now we did remove the temporal operculum. The temporal operculum, of course, it's synonym of the superior temporal gyrus. You see that the middle temporal gyrus is not covering the insula, just the superior temporal gyrus. And you expose the, the, the inferior half of the insula. As I said yesterday, in this specimen, also common, you have a single long gyrus of the insula to start with inferiorly, and then it bifurcates like a Y. These all are short insular gyra. And this is the central sucus of the insula. You see, this is another specimen. You see how the central sucus of the insula is continuous with the central sucus of the brain? This is post-central, this is pre-central, this is inferior frontal gyrus. So this is central sulcus for sure. And you see that it's continuous with the central sulcus of the insula. Very interesting. This is very well organized. Now, 
I'm sorry. Well, if we want to get to the ventricle, transylvian, okay, we have to expose the, 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 the inferior, uh, inferior limiting sulcus. This is anterior limiting sulcus, this is superior limiting sulcus, and this is inferior limiting sulcus. This is limbing insula. It's the anterior limit of the insula, okay? So M1 will be coming here, and then you have two branches of, uh, of uh, M2 here. Okay, you have two branches. And just after the, the, this bifurcation here, posterior to the limbing insula, if you do a small hole here, you're going to get into the ventricle. If you do your small hole more anteriorly, you're not going to get into the ventricle. You're going to get where? What is anterior to the inferior horn? You're going to get into the amygdala, exactly. Right? So that's what you want to do to reach the ventricle just posterior. To do this, you don't have to remove the superior temporal gyrus. I did remove here because it's hard, this brain is fixed, in order to show this. I cannot expose the inferior limiting sucos in a cadaver, in a fixed cadaver, without removing this, because this is covering, this is hard. But when you're operating, you open widely the sylvan fissure, the first thing you expose is the inferior limiting sulcus. It's hard to expose the superior part because it's covered by the operculum, this frontal parietal operculum. But the inferior limiting sulcus is what you can expose during surgery. You expose easily the inferior limiting sulcus and you expose this apical, lesion, the apical region. So this part of the insula is pretty easy to expose when you open widely the sylvan fissure. When you come back here, Next to the Heschel gyrus, the, 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 the fissure is already flat. It's difficult to open it. It's difficult to split the fissure. So you see, if we do here a small hole, we are getting to the ventricle. We are getting to the ventricle. Okay? Let's, let me come back here to show what I'm going to do. Oops. I'm going now to remove all this neocortical area here, which is, which is a, a strategy to expose the mesial structures. You see, you have the mesial structure, you have the hippocampus here, okay? And this is amygdala. You have the amygdala. And this is the temporal pole. In order to expose this here in this dissection, and particularly when dealing with tumors, not with epilepsy, tumors uh, go to the temporal pole we call this all the neocortical part of the temporal pole. This is the allocortical part, more old, older part, which is the parahypocampal gyrus and the hippocampus. And you expose better all these, all these uh, structures here. So, pes hippocampi, which means it's the head of hippocampus. You have amygdala here anteriorly. And if you, if you go this way, you're going towards the subiculum. You're sort of opening the choroidal fissure here. And if you cut the amygdala, and remember that the amygdala goes anteriorly, you come from, let me come back here. This is the head of hippocampus. The inferior choroidal point would be at this level because the inferior choroidal point is just posterior to the head of hippocampus. If I want to cut this, I go from the inferior choroidal point and I'll cut all this temporal stem here. This is the peduncular part of the temporal stem. If I cut this, I can then remove as a single block the hippocampus and the amygdala. Okay, so medulla hypocompactomy. And if I do remove this, and then I see the peduncle, you see that the peduncle is just, this is posterior part of subiculum. This is peduncle. Of course, this is already pons. Now, let's see the same thing in a frozen brain so we can do some, uh, some, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry some fiber dissection together through this pterional view. <clears throat> Again, you're seeing here the insula, and we did remove the mesiotemporal structures. Okay, here underneath the, in, the limit, inferior limiting sulcus, you have the so-called temporal stem. So if you have a, 
if you have a, a, an insular tumor, it would come to the temporal lobe through the temporal stem here, through the temporal stem. And it can come through the, uh, to the operculum around the superior limiting sucus of the insula. If I remove the inferior part of the insula again, what I'll be seeing? I'll be seeing the subcortical white matter, which is the extreme capsule, a, a, a little bit together with claustrum. Okay, continue, I see a little bit more of claustrum, okay. And now I'm at the level of the external capsule. You see I have the uncinate fascicle, I already have the IFOF. Of course, this is all cutted here. What is this gray matter here? I'm in the roof of the third ventricle of the inferior horn. So what would be this gray matter here? What is it? I'm posterior to the amygdala. The amygdala was removed here. Remember we did remove the hippocampus and the amygdala was anteriorly. So we have something that is coming towards the amygdala here. Pretty much in the roof of the of the of the the, the, the inferior horn. This is quarter plexus that was left towards the thalamus in the roof. So this is the tail of the caudate. This is the tail of the caudate. Tail of the caudate again. So if I remove, I start seeing uh, uh, underneath all this. I'll be seeing the the, the putamen. Okay, so I can see now the putamen. I still have left the uncinate fascicle. Okay, the uncinate fascicle. Here's the, cord, the, the, the tail of the caudate. And if I remove the inferior aspect of the putamen, I can see what? What is this here? Medial to the putamen is the? Globus pallidus. And what is this here? Anterior commission. Anterior commission. Let me just come back here to emphasize something to you. Next slide. We have to understand the tumors, okay? I said that we have to understand the tumors to understand and to know how to go after them and to know what we can do and particularly what we cannot do, okay? So the insula was removed here. So inferior limiting, uh, limiting sucos of the insula would be here. And I said that from the underneath the inferior limiting sucos of the insula, the tumors can come from the subinsular area, the insular tumors, to the... Uh, to the temporal lobe. But if the tumors go to the, and it's very common for this to happen. Another very common extension is to see a piece of these tumors extended to the, uh, so to the orbital uh, surface. How do they get there? To the uncinate fascicle. If they go to the uncinate fascicle, they get to the orbital uh, part of the frontal lobe. So we were at this point. Do we have another laser pointer here? Uh, we were at this point. Jason, do we have a laser pointer? Uh, we were at this point, uncinate fascicle and anterior commissure. And then we have the uh, globus pallidus here because we did remove the inferior half, uh, inferior part of the putamen. That's all you, you, you have to have your x-ray vision when you're seeing the insula, when you split the fissure. These things are very close. Let me just uh, to show you something else. Sometimes the tumor goes subputaminal. They go here. They get in here. So remember that the vessels were particularly, the lenticular stride vessels were particularly anterior to the anterior commissure. This is the ventus striatum area. If you're seeing the anterior commissure, it's because you are in the posterior wall of the ventus striatum that it's all here, all here. But in this area, it's frequent for a piece of tumor come to this area. And this, if you open the limit, inferior limiting sucus, thank you. Where is it? Begin. Okay, let's see. Okay, if you open the inferior limiting sucus posteriorly, you're going, you're going naturally to be underneath the putamen. 
and sometimes you have a, a, a tumor just underneath the putamen, laterally to the globus pallidus. You can easily see this in the localize it in the MRI. This is an area you can reach. The problem is to reach the area that it's anterior to the anterior commission. This is the problematic area. Not here, but here. Okay, if we dissect a little bit more, we, we, we cut the anterior commissure. We still have the uncinate fascicle here. You see that the uncinate fascicle go towards the orbital region. Tumors would go to the orbital region through the uncinate fascicle. It's the most anterior aspect of the so-called temporal stem, okay? Tumors from the temporal stem, they get inside the ventral striatum. This is anterior perforated substance. This is posterior wall, anterior commissure, posterior wall, globus pallidus. Nucleus accumbens will be more medially there, the ventral striatum itself. Okay, so through the temporal stem, tumors go to the ventral striatum, and as I showed in the MRI, from the ventral striatum, they will reach the septal region. This is all anterior to the anterior commissure. Lot of lenticular striate arteries here. No possible to get in here. Posterior to the anterior commissure, you can get. Another view of the same thing. Now we, we, we expose, we did, we did remove completely the putamen, and we did expose the, uh, the whole globus pallidus. And this is all internal capsule that you can see posterior. This is anterior limb, anterior limb. So this is the roof of this area that is the ventral striatum. Now we are dissecting, we are exposing more. Ventral striatum. If we go, more, if you, we cut the internal capsule fibers, this is all one. This is all subinsular. This is all underneath the insula for you to know. If we cut the internal capsule, what do we see medial? What is medial to the internal capsule? Caudate. Exactly the caudate, right? The caudate. So. The, the anterior limb of the, the internal capsule is in between the head of the caudate and the putamen, right? So the putamen was removed here, and so this is the caudate. This is the head of the caudate. And accumbens was here. Accumbens was here, anterior commissure. So you see how close these things are from the insular surface? And this is seen from the base. You see here the upper Remember, we did remove the hippocampus and all the mesiotemporal structures here. We left the choroid plexus towards the thalamus. This is thalamus here. Okay, this is thalamus. Indeed, this is the lateral geniculate body region. You see in the medial, you see in the, sorry, the laser pointer, you see the lateral mesencephalic sucus? You see the medial geniculate body there? This is lateral geniculate body. This is lateral geniculate body. Lateral geniculate body is already in the roof of the inferior horn. And here you have the choroid plexus that was left towards the thalamus, okay? What is this here? This is, this, this is the, the, the caudate that was coming, the tail of the caudate in the roof was left here. And what is this here? This is the upper extension of the amygdala, you know? that it's going towards the globus pallidus, and it's covering the hippocampus head that was here. Everything that is anterior to the optic tract is anterior, anterior perforate substance. And if we go here to the top, what is this layer? You, you have the insular cortical area that we left here, the most superior aspect. You have the extreme capsule, which is the subcortical white matter of the insula, and then we have this gray layer here. What is this gray layer here? Clostrum. The claustrum. And then we have the extreme capsule. And of course, then the, the external capsule, I'm sorry, the external capsule we have here. And just underneath the external capsule, we have the putamen. Underneath the putamen, we have globus pallidus. This is globus pallidus that we were seeing. You see, so this is all in the subinsular area. All in the subinsular area. You see one optic tract here, another, I'm sorry, olfactory tract, olfactory tract. So this is the interhemispheric fissure. This is rectus gyrus in on one side, rectus gyrus. And here you have 
the posterior, the posterior uh, orbit, so posterior orbital gyrus that was covering, that it's covering the, uh, the, the anterior wall of the insula. You see, anterior wall of the insula it was, would be hidden here. So this is posterior orbital gyrus until here. Pretty much the same. No, we did, we did remove here more to see more than anterior perforate substance superior to the optic tract here. And here you can see again all these layers we talked about. And this is all underneath the insula. If in, in surgery when surgeons do mapping uh, and remove the operculum in order to reach the insula, they are very close to all these structures we're talking about here. And that's what I wanted to show you. So I wanted to show, wanted to show the same structure we talked about yesterday but seen through the splitting of the sylvan fissure, which is something very usual that you will do in surgery when you see the insula to know what you have inside, what you have subcortically, subinsular. Okay. Mm -hmm.